Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. I am solo today. Saturday against the Memphis Grizzlies, we had the potential of seeing the 2022 NBA Finals matchup. And now tonight, we have the treat of seeing the potential 2022 Eastern Conference Finals matchup. Bulls versus Heat, DeMar versus Jimmy. It may be on a Monday night, but I hope you can get some sleep in on Tuesday because it's going to be a showdown that you don't want to miss. Bulls have struggled this season against winning teams, though. Entering the Miami game, the Bulls are 19 and 16 against teams with a 500 or above record. That is a winning record, no doubt about that. But the teams that are on top of the ones are the ones we're likely going to face in this year's playoffs, and they need to find a way to win against them. Also, the Bulls are three and in seven in their last 10 games on the uh, 10 road games. I'm sorry about that. And they need to find ways to win on the road. Obviously game sevens could come down. If the bulls are not the number one seed game sevens could go down being on the away court. You would hate to see the bulls lose that way. So they need to find a way in order to win on the road. But in today's episode, let's kick things off. We're going to start by quickly going through the bulls. Most recent loss this past Saturday night. Uh, to the Memphis Grizzlies at the United Center. So just quickly want to hit on that game a little bit and talk about exactly what happened, but also the feeling of the game. There was a playoff vibe, no mat- like no doubt about it. Uh, the Bulls were down by 20 at one point. Uh, they were definitely struggling with moving the ball, you know, especially containing Ja Morant, who wasn't expected to play in this game due to a questionable uh, hip injury. So the Bulls probably mentally were like praying that he wasn't going to play. And also we are missing our starting port guard, Lonzo Ball, even though Io is doing a great job. Lonzo Ball definitely would have been a lot better defensive lockdown in regards to holding jaw who had an absolute career night. But let's go over our guys first in the good that came out of that game. DeMar's overall, the 50% uh, uh, field goal percentage along with 30 plus point streak ended yesterday, but the 30 plus point, uh, per game streak is still continuing. It's now at 10 games. Uh, he went to 10 for 29 from the field, two from two for three though. And he had 31 total points. The streak was bound to end though. I mean, it was historic. It was very impressive for having 30, 30 to 35 more points in a 50 uh, percent or more field goal percentage. So he got tossed at the end of the game. I thought that it was, you know, he was showing his emotion. DeMar did not want his guys to go down without a fight. Probably also looking to get some, you know, pump up the pump up the guys and get them going because he did have five fouls. So unfortunately, Demar did get out of the game in the last couple minutes. But and also, unfortunately, John ja Morant did play and he went ballistic, going for a career high forty six points. He was fifteen for twenty eight from the field and three for four from three. He this season he's not barely shooting over thirty two percent from three. So you know this was totally rare. But Bulls fans, as we can all probably agree, that was like twenty ten, like early twenty tens Derrick Rose vibes. I mean, a point guard doing what John ja Morant is doing this season. He is doing better than D Rose was doing. And during his MVP season at the time. So it's just super impressive to see, kind of see that light again, kind of see that type of player in the league. And, you know, the guy put up nearly half or almost half of Memphis's points. You can't deny that. There was a lot of defensive struggles, especially on the interior against Vucevic, uh, specifically Tristan Thomas also really couldn't contain him in the interior. It was tough. It was a very tough game. You know, he was hot all game, the same with the rest of the Grizzlies. So uh, it, it was close. It, Bulls only lost by six. They lost 116 to 110. It was a close game. It wasn't that close. So the entire game, Bulls struggled, came back a lot of times, but you know, got to look at next game. Can't keep looking in the past, but we want to give our bench player of the game to Kobe White, who had 15 points, five assists and four rebounds. So again, Bulls lost. They're now 39 and 22, but still they are uh, in their second in the East right now. So almost have entire full court advantage, unless they were to face the current team that is in first in Miami Heat, who will be going over in just a second. But before we go into that, speaking of bench players, we'd like to thank our sponsor, the Bench Mob. Size, shy Slamma Jamma shirts are now on sale on BenchBob.com. They started back in 2010 and reemerged in 2021 to represent the best bench in the NBA. To get your Bench Mob merch, please head over to the link in the description and use code JAY20 to get 20% off your first order. So let's go into today's main topic of the day, Bulls versus Heat preview the bulls are 39 and 22 they are second place in the east and who's in first the team that they are playing in miami the miami Heat, who are 40 and 21 
This could be an Easter conference final matchup this year. There is no doubt about it from right now. One and two, that's probably where the betters are going to go. Tony could agree to that. Uh, but we'll say it now that, that we see this happening. It's going to be bulls versus heat 2010 vibes all over again. Uh, bulls are obviously fighting with that. And the, the heat are without LeBron James, without Dwayne Wade, without Chris Bosh, but they do have a guy named Jimmy Butler down there leading the way. Bulls are looking to tie for the top of the East with this win. That would put them at uh, 40 and 22 and the heat at 40 and 22. The heat are a little hot though. They have won four of their last five games. Obviously the bulls were on a pretty significant winning streak before uh, Saturday night's loss to the Grizzlies, but the heat are not going to go down without a fight. They're the fifth best defensive team in regards to points allowed in the NBA, only allowing 104.8 points per game. Jimmy Butler always has good games against the Bulls because it is the team that drafted him and his former team. And you know, he's going to try to lock everyone down, especially DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, but they have a good relationship off the court. So hopefully there isn't too much beef there, but the Bulls have the second highest field goal percentage in the NBA as of right now at 48.2% field goal percentage. So almost every other shot, which is impressive. There is no doubt about that. Um, the Grizzlies defense are Overall, the Grizzlies, you know, were able to maintain them enough, but the Bulls still have a good shot at beating the Miami Heat. They have to, they have to make sure that they get everyone involved. He need, especially Tristan Thomas, he has to step up big in this game, filling in, you know, filling in the middle, especially if Vooch can't handle Jimmy Butler, Tyra Hero, any of their big explosive players that could be going down into the paint. So you definitely want to look out for that. So it's going to be a good matchup and it is in Miami, which again, the Bulls are three and seven in their last 10 games on the road. So take a look out for that. And they're 19 and 16 again against 500 teams or better. So again, they have a 500 plus record with that, but it's almost 500 bulls have to get this major win in order to not only stay at top of the East, but also kind of get the, get the juices flowing again in order to be good and good moving forward. Uh, we are still missing Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso. Those guys should be back within the next two weeks. So stay tuned for that. We're very excited to have them back on the court. So three keys to the game before we close out, you got to move the ball against this Miami defense and you have to be good. You have to constantly keep moving the ball around. You can't stick with it because they're going to double team you. They're going to make you uncomfortable and they're going to cause turnovers. Uh, that's my second uh, point of the game too, is the Bulls have to eliminate all turnovers. Even though the Bulls are ranked six with the least amount of turnovers in the league with 12.9 as of right now, they need to be number one in the league to act like or be number one in the league, especially against Miami without Ball or Caruso out there. You're missing a lot of guys who can move the ball around. You do have high flyers out there. You do have athletic guys, but the Bulls have to find a way in order to eliminate as many turnovers as possible. They're going to happen. There's no doubt about it, but you have to find ways to eliminate it. And finally, you shut down Jimmy Butler. You shut him down mentally. You shut him down on the court stat-wise. And if you do that, the Bulls are in great position because he is Miami's leader. He is the voice that helps keep that team moving forward. And if the Bulls can shut him down, should be in good shape. And hopefully the Bulls will be 20-16 and 16 against 500-plus teams and get back in the win column, winning their seventh out of their last eight games. So... That is it for this episode of Justin of the Year Chicago. We are very excited for this game against the Miami Heat as it is top of the East, the, the best of the East is what it is. So stay tuned for that. But with that, thank you very much for coming into this episode of Justin of the Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde and we will see you guys next time.